Practical step number two is prioritizing communication. So practice open and honest communication in all of your relationships, expressing your needs, your emotions, as well as boundaries, and clearly and respectfully doing this, all right? Not just rah, 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 but you know, that's a a point that I wanna make. When you are in a moment and you feel yourself upset, enraged, whatever the case may be, which these are natural emotional reactions, I would encourage you not to address the matter during that time. Sit back, write out your thoughts, text out your thoughts, type out that email, but don't hit send. Wait until you are in a calm, cool, collected headspace where you've thought about it, maybe even played the conversation out. And then reflect on what you wrote, what you text or draft text, what you draft emailed, and then adjust it. By that way, you're not communicating from a space of emotion and your tone of voice is not from a place of enragement, but it's from a place where you've done the work to process and now you can articulate what it is that you need in a healthy way, opposed to like attacking because it's not, all about the delivery, that is one part, but it's also on how does that person receive? How is that person going to receive? It's like twofold. So if your delivery is rah, 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 the person on the receiving end may completely shut down. Good morning, welcome to the Conscious Courage Podcast and happy singing with me, Motivation No Monday. I am your host, Devane Touche. I meet with you all every Monday at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to provide practical steps toward our inner healing journey or what I've coined internal glow up. So whether you're here for the first time or returning, I thank you for tuning in. And the team and I are so grateful to every subscriber via YouTube, every listener on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, as well as Spotify. And every, every, every IGU babe out there who is keeping up with us via social media at CC Podcast with D. T, y'all are locked in and we are too hype that you're here. Ensure that you listen through to the end of this episode to receive your practical steps. And also, here's an announcement, y'all. I am, we are seeking 100 downloads via the audio streaming platforms I just mentioned by 1 July 2024. So get out there, listen, download, like, subscribe, all of the things. Okay, let's dive into today's episode. In episode eight, we are embracing secure attachments with an emphasis on the foundation of healing relationships. As a reminder for the month of May, we are exploring attachment styles. Episode six, we all learned of the four main attachment styles identified in psychological studies. And those are secure attachment, anxious, preoccupied attachment, dismissive, avoidant attachment, as well as fearful, avoidant attachment. Now, today, we are, as I've mentioned, taking a deeper dive into the secure attachment styles as it relates to relationships. I have five different examples that we're going to explore, and of course, those practical steps that we all love and implement in our lives, right? Yes, I know y'all implementing it. So get your paper and pen ready. Embracing secure attachment, whether in a platonic work or romantic relationship, understanding and cultivating secure attachment is essential for building trust, intimacy, as well as resilience, love resilience. And we spoke about cultivating resilience in the previous episodes, if you go back to April. Now we're going to explore embracing those secure attachments in all areas of our lives. So let's explore what it means to embrace secure attachment in a few areas of our lives. Before we get into those examples, I want to remind you of the definition as it pertains to secure attachment, and that is characterized by a deep sense of trust, safety, and security in relationships. Individuals with a secure attachment style, they are comfortable with both intimacy as well as independence, and they have positive views of themselves as well as others. This is like 
goals, okay? People talk about relationship goals. Here we're talking about attachment goals. And this is it, that secure attachment. They often are comfortable and able to articulate or communicate their needs and emotions effectively. And they seek out support as well as connection in times of need. Secure attachment serves as a solid foundation for building healthy, fulfilling relationships across various domains of our life. And as I mentioned, we are going to explore some of those domains or some of those examples. At break, Are you seeking an electrifying speaker to ignite transformation in your audience? Well, look no further. Hi, I'm Devane Touche, real estate investor, Air Force veteran, and host of the Conscious Courage podcast, where new episodes are released every Monday, 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time via YouTube and all streaming audio platforms. I specialize in delivering impactful keynote speeches that inspire change and elevate your minds. Whether it's a virtual gathering or an in-person event, I bring passion, expertise, and a unique delivery to every arena or every environment that I'm in. Let's captivate your audience together and create an unforgettable experience. Contact me today to book your next event and let's embark on this journey of transformation or let's get all of your attendees on this journey toward internal glow up. You can book me via my website by going to www.divanetache.com. I'll spell that for you. It is www.d-a-v as in Victor, O-N-E-A-T-A-S-H-A-E.com. I look forward to connecting with you. Take care. There are five examples, so let's go ahead and get into those. Example number one is platonic relationships. Here is an example of platonic relationships in regards to secure attachment. Sarah and Jessica have a deep and trusting friendship where they share their joys as well as their struggles openly, or what I would like to call lessons learned. They support each other unconditionally, even during disagreement, maintaining a strong bond of trust and mutual respect. Now, in contrast to this, I want to provide you with an insecure attachment style does look like in a platonic relationship. In contrast, Amy and Lisa have a volatile friendship, okay, marked by jealousy and distrust. They often question each other's motives and struggle to communicate effectively, leading to frequent misunderstandings and conflict. This is despite their history together, their friendship that runs deep into childhood, their insecure attachment patterns hinder their ability to cultivate a stable and supportive friendship. Does that sound familiar? Like, you know, this is for you to ponder on, not to answer in the chat. But if you wish to discuss more, you're always welcome to send a direct message on to me and let's discuss. Example number two, work relationships, secure attachment. Michael enjoys a collaborative work environment where trust and communication are valued. He feels secure in his friendships with his colleagues, knowing they have each other's back and work together towards common goals, fostering a positive and productive work culture. Of course, I'm gonna hit y'all with a contrast. By that way, you can weigh out the current work relationships that you have or other relationships that we discuss. So in contrast, here is an example of a work relationship through insecure attachment. Sarah feels isolated and unsupported in her workplace where competition and mistrust are rampant among her colleagues. She struggles to form meaningful connections and often feels undermined and undervalued. This leads her to decreased morale and job satisfaction. I can Definitely empathize and sympathize with Sarah in that scenario. Here is example number three, romantic relationship as it pertains to secure attachment. Andre and Emily share a secure and loving romantic relationship characterized by mutual respect, 
trust, and emotional intimacy. They communicate openly and they work together as a team to navigate life's challenges, strengthening their bond as well as their resilience as a couple. Uh Uh-oh, y'all. Here we go. In contrast now, let's hear about this romantic relationship as it pertains to insecure attachment. In contrast, Mark and Kate's relationship is marked by insecurity and instability. They struggle to trust each other and often resort to manipulation and control tactics to maintain power dynamics in their relationship. Their insecure attachment patterns lead to cycles of conflict as well as emotional turmoil, hindering their ability to foster a healthy and supportive partnership. What does that sound like to you all? Can you resonate with that? That's the purpose of sharing this information, bringing you this information, this insight is for you to ruminate on the information given and see, okay, where do I identify? Where do I fit? And then using the practical steps provided toward the end to implement the change in the direction that you want to go toward your internal glow up. Transitioning into example number four, we're going to bring in the parent-child relationship secure attachment. David and Lily share a close and mutual bond where Lily feels safe and valued in her father's presence. David provides a supportive environment for Lily to explore and grow, fostering her emotional well-being as well as development. In contrast, Emma and her son Jake have a strained relationship marked by emotional distance and neglect. Emma struggles to provide consistent care and support for Jake. Did I say Jake or Jack? They the same person. Leading to feelings of insecurity and abandonment in their relationship. So Jack's emotional needs get unmet, impacting his sense of self-worth and belonging. That's deep. The month of July, we will explore our inner child and childhood trauma and how we show up now based on our childhood experiences. We will have a counselor join who specializes in this area. It's going to be so good. So that's just my little plug for July. Stay tuned. Now, here is our final example. Example number five, a mentor to mentee relationship secure attachment. Rachel serves as a supportive mentor to Marcus, offering guidance and encouragement as he navigates his personal and professional growth journey. Marcus feels secure in Rachel's mentorship, knowing that he can rely on her support and expertise to help him succeed. In contrast, a mentor-mentee relationships, insecure attachment. Lisa's mentorship of Sarah is marked by criticism and manipulation, okay, y'all? Sarah feels insecure and undervalued in their relationship as Lisa undermines her confidence and fails to provide constructive support. Sarah's growth and development are hindered by the toxic dynamics of their insecure attachment. That's no bueno. Okay, y'all, those were the five areas we explored as it pertains to secure attachment in the area of relationships, both secure attachment as well as insecure attachment. So this is my favorite part. I hope y'all's favorite part as well, where I provide you with some practical steps because the goal is for you to take this information and implement it in your life. So practical step number one, you want to cultivate self-awareness. I've said this before and I will continue to say it. Before you can change a thing, you have to notice that the thing requires changing. Like you have to accept that, okay, I'm showing up in this way, this light, i presume what led you to this podcast and tuning in is, hey, you recognize emotionally, mentally, spiritually, there is room for improvement. There are areas you want to uproot. You're seeking to learn more about yourself. And this is the perfect practical step. Self-awareness, it has to start there. If we don't see that our reaction, our way of thinking, our behavior 
is impacting us in a negative way, then we won't make the changes. Here's a phrase that makes me cringe to my soul is when people say, oh, well, that's just fill in the blank. Like, oh, well, that's just Anthony or, oh, that's just how Ashley always is. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When we don't address what is taking place, then one, that person doesn't change. And two, the environment doesn't change. Or three, more importantly, we don't change. Now, that's why this is just like my favorite practical step. And that is self-awareness. So taking the time to reflect on your own attachment styles. We have four. You can go back into episode six in which we took a deep dive into those four attachment styles. But having that background education allows you to know how to influence yourself or how you can be of influence in relationships. It also will allow you to identify patterns or behaviors that may be hindering to your ability to form the secure attachment style that we just discussed. And it will hinder you from committing to making the positive changes where needed. If you say I'm perfect, nothing's wrong with me, I'm good to go, baby, you have blind spots. And if you don't acknowledge those blind spots, then you're not able to do the necessary work so that you can see what's going on. Practical step number two is prioritizing communication. So practice open and honest communication in all of your relationships, expressing your needs, your emotions, as well as boundaries, and clearly and respectfully doing this, all right? Not just rah, rah, rah. But you know, that's a a point that I want to make. When you are in a moment and you feel yourself upset, enraged, whatever the case may be, which these are natural emotional reactions, I would encourage you not to address the matter during that time. Sit back, write out your thoughts, text out your thoughts, type out that email, but don't hit send. Wait until you are in a calm, cool, collected headspace where you've thought about it, maybe even played the conversation out, and then reflect on what you wrote, what you text or draft text, what you draft emailed, and then adjust it. By that way, you're not communicating from a space of emotion and your tone of voice is not from a place of enragement, but it's from a place where you've done the work to process and now you can articulate what it is that you need in a healthy way, opposed to like attacking, because it's not all about the delivery. That is one part, but it's also on how does that person receive? How is that person going to receive? It's like twofold. So if your delivery is rah, 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 the person on the receiving end may completely shut down just as an example, or they may return with rah, 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 and then you walk away and nothing has been solved, solved, solved. Like, you know what I mean? So working on that communication piece, I would encourage you to employ or challenge those around you to do the same as well. And strive to create an environment of trust and vulnerability where everyone feels valued and heard. That's easier said than done, but you can definitely get there. Have them tune in to the Conscious Courage podcast for these lessons and these practical steps, y'all. I'll do the work for you, okay? You just reap the benefits. Send them my way, baby, and I'll do the work. So practical step number three is build trust through consistency. Demonstrate your reliability, your consistency, and follow through in your actions and words. You do this by being dependable and trustworthy. You can strengthen the bonds of attachment in your relationships and foster a sense of security and safety for yourself as well as others. Practical step number four. Seek support and connection. So surround yourself with supportive individuals who uplift and encourage you, but they're also intentional about nurturing the relationships in their life as well as yours. Whether through friendships, family ties, or romantic partnerships, prioritize relationships that enhance your sense of security and well-being. I think it's important that we understand we get to choose who is in our life and who isn't. Now, there are some areas where those lines are blurred. What I will hope you take away here in your support, in your connection, and in your relationships is that if there is someone in your aura, in your space, 
and they are taking away more than they are pouring in. They are taking away more than they are enhancing or building up. You have the authority to cut ties. You have the authority, if it's not to cut ties, but to limit interaction. Just know that you are empowered. I know there was a post that I saw a couple years ago that made mention you are the producer of this movie called Life. And what you can control is the cast members. If that person isn't meeting the mark, if they're not reading their script accordingly, next. Now I'm saying this not to say that God is not in control, not to say that God is not the author and the finisher of your life. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that there are some areas where you do have control and that is your support and your connections. Choose wisely, my dear. And if there's anyone that is not meeting the mark, you gotta cut it. All right, practical step number five is having self-compassion. Be kind and compassionate toward yourself as you navigate the ups and downs of building secure attachments. Embrace your imperfections as well as your vulnerabilities and recognize that healing and growth are ongoing processes. By extending grace to yourself, you can cultivate a deeper sense of security and acceptance in your relationships. What have I said previously, y'all? Be patient with yourself. This is a journey. This is a marathon. You are on this inner healing, internal glow up journey for the long haul. I won't say you shouldn't expect a change overnight, but to be realistic, give yourself patience and grace. All right, let's get into these announcements. I hope that you enjoyed those practical steps. I always love providing them. A few announcements, y'all. As you've heard in the introduction, and if you follow us on social media platforms at CC Podcast with DT, as well as on Facebook or via YouTube at the Conscious Courage Podcast, and on all streaming platforms at the Conscious Courage Podcast, then you already know we are available via audio yes 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 i mentioned it in the introduction but i also want to re-emphasize it here and that is you can find the conscious courage podcast on amazon music apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, and spotify so while you're out working out okay taking your children to school walking around your house cleaning you're warming up for that local basketball game at the gym or at the park, whatever the case may be, you can also continue to work on your mental and your emotional health by listening to the soothing voice of Devane Tache <laughs> in your ear. I mean, you could just listen to the Conscious Courage podcast anywhere anytime you can always experience this vibe i would also encourage you to download by that way for example let's say you're traveling it's time to take flight you're on a flight you don't have internet connection but you have the episode downloaded you can still listen all right transitioning into announcement number two you can journey over to my website at www.davonetache.com. That is www.davonetache.com.com.com to learn more about me, but more importantly, inquire via my contact form ways to work with rather in person or virtually with your girl. Yes, y'all, I'm so excited. I can bring this energy to you live. So mosey on over to my website, explore it, learn more about me, my journey, see some photos from way back when on until now, and contact me. Let's work. Let's work and work. Okay, y'all. Last but not least, the Conscious Courage podcast is moving. Yes, 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 we're moving. I'm so grateful to the Sun Studio based out in Wichita Falls, Texas, and this is not a paid advertisement. Simply want to share my gratitude for setting up 
the studio in a way that has been so pleasing and graceful and allowing me to embark on this official podcast journey using their facility. So I thank you all with my whole heart. Yet we're transitioning and the transformational content is still coming to you. The only difference will be the background and the couch, but the content is the same. I'm still your lovely host and the team will still be providing you with the best of the best content, y'all. So stick around, but expect a shift in the month of June. Before I exit on out of episode eight, I do want to thank, thank, thank the subscribers who have tuned in and been with us since April 1st. No joke. No joke, no April Fool's joke. These are the subscribers who have been tuning in via YouTube and I'm very grateful and I thank you all. So to Miss Telena Brown, Miss Crystal, there's another individual here, Agrilaire's future MD. Hey, uh, Jamie Smith, there is someone else, a uh, Shantu, another no name person, Miss Jackie Thomas, Miss Anne's Daily Bread. Thank y'all, thank y'all, thank y'all. There is a Amneris Ramos. Thank you, Miss Myrna Sims. There's a Jordan Oates out here, Michael. Grony, forgive me if I mispronounce y'all's names. Ebony Nicole, thank you, thank you. Shani, Miss Shani, thank you. The social change makers, thank you. Keeping it Brittany, hey. Dr. Evangel Savage, thank you. And Victor P. Towasaka. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being a subscriber to the Conscious Courage podcast within the last 30 to 60 days. I greatly appreciate you. The team greatly appreciates you. Now this concludes episode eight of the Conscious Courage podcast podcast. So I thank you for tuning in today's episode of the Conscious Courage podcast. If you enjoyed today's discussion and you want to continue this journey together, be sure to subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, like, as well as share with at least three to five people. Y'all is only what four things that I'm asking of you. And I greatly appreciate your support. Until next time, stay courageous, conscious, and keep growing from within. Remember, it takes courage to be conscious, and courage is the key to conscious living. I love you all. Until next time, see you next week. Disclaimer, as a content creator with a background in psychology and ongoing studies in mental health at the graduate level, it's important to clarify that I am not a licensed professional. The videos and podcasts I produce are intended for educational, information, entertainment, and transformational purposes only. While I strive to provide accurate information and insight, it's essential to consult with a licensed mental health professional for clinical perspectives and personalized advice tailored to your specific needs. Your mental well-being is of the utmost importance to me and seeking guidance from a qualified provider is encouraged for any concern or issues that you may be experiencing.